Borgata Atlantic City, let's go. Let's do this. I'm so excited to be here. This is the number one hotel and it's not even close. Uh, when I got here, I was immediately reminded of that the second I stepped foot on this property. It is palatial. It is stunning. It is elegant. In terms of the first impression and in terms of elegance, it is absolutely in its own stratosphere. Uh, I got to my room and I'm reminded of the old Buddhism philosophy that expectations are the key to happiness. Uh, the less you have, the happier you'll be, and that's certainly true in this room. It's a good room, maybe even a great room. But for the elite hotel in Atlantic City, I guess I was wanting more. Seems a little small, definitely seems a little outdated, and it certainly has signs of wear and tear. Now again, don't get me wrong, it's a great room. It certainly has elements of class, style, and sophistication. But if you blindly put me in a Marriott room and then blindly put me in this room, I'm not sure I could tell the difference. All right, it's night number one. We are diving right into the video. No time to waste. I have three nights here and there is so much to see. I'm starting things off at Old Homestead and you might be thinking, James, Old Homestead, there's Angeline, there's Izakaya, there is B Prime. What the heck are you doing at Old Homestead? There's a method to my madness. That is not Old Homestead. That is not Old Homestead. Well, at least that is not the Old Homestead that I have grown accustomed to. That is the new Old Homestead. Remember, after my last Old Homestead dining experience in Las Vegas, I swore off that brand. I thought it was dull, boring, bland, predictable. I didn't have any good things to say about it. This is quite the opposite. This was an amazing dining experience. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the double-decker dining layout, uh, the energetic color scheme or the delicious menu items or the vivacious dining experience, whatever it is, uh, the word is out because it was the spot to be last night. I walked in at 5.20 p.m. They opened up at 5 and I expected just to grab a random seat at the bar. There wasn't a spot to be had. Overall, it was a marvelous dining experience and I am shocked that that is Old Homestead. So it is early. It is extremely early. Um, I have breakfast on my mind, particularly coffee, and there are three spots to get a good, quick cup of coffee uh, early in the morning here at Borgata. I am taking you to all three. So if you want a quick and good cup of coffee in the morning, there are three options. You have La Baza downstairs, and you have Borgata Baking Company and Starbucks upstairs. As I go further and further down the coffee rabbit hole, I'm becoming a less and less uh, proponent of Starbucks. I find the bean to be average, it's taste to be average, but it is an institution that has a huge following. And if you get a really good cup of Starbucks, it will keep you on the dole for a long, long time moving forward. And that's what happened today. And then after that, I went downstairs to La Vaza. Now, La Vaza is open 24 seven. This is gonna be your backbone, not only for coffee, but for beverages and some foods, if you want something any time of day or night. And then I went upstairs, and this was the only one of the three where there was a line at seven o'clock in the morning. Even though this place features La Vaza coffees as well, it was definitely the best tasting latte I had all day. And I'm not sure if it's possible for a sticky bun to be too sticky, but if it is indeed possible to reach that status, that bun today definitely did it. And then, oh my God, the breakfast sandwich, the croissant for a grab and go convenience breakfast sandwich item. It might've been the best one I've had all year. So Borgata Baking Company is definitely where it's at in the morning. Uh, my plan today is to go to the pool, but the weather is not cooperating at the moment. I think what I'm gonna do is Go do something for an hour, hour and a half, and then come back and check on it. The gym, the spa, the pool, it's all in one centralized area. 
Uh, I started my morning off at the pool. I'm not really a big fan of indoor pools. Maybe I'm jaded because I grew up in the Midwest, but for an indoor pool, uh, this one is quite regal. It's actually really impressive. If you get there right away in the morning, you have the place to yourself. So if you wanna get a lap in or take a soak in the hot tub, you can be able to get that done privately. My favorite part of the entire morning was stepping outside into the courtyard. I had no idea that was out there. I think if you're looking for some greenery, some fresh air, some tranquility, or just to take a break from the chaos of Borgata, that is the spot to do it. So I'm looking outside right now and the sun is making an appearance. I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm headed downstairs to the pool. The sun could be a scarce commodity sometimes in Atlantic City. As soon as it came out, I bolted down to the pool. Uh, I believe the pool is 21 plus. I did not see a single child down there. And because the crowd is limited and also because I got there right away, I headed to myself almost for pretty much an hour. I had the Pineapple Express, which was a triple shot of both vitamin C and alcohol. And then I had another taste of the island's drink as well. After that, I did go mosey over to the beer garden just to check it out. I sampled a mango wheat cerveza, which was quite tasty. And then after that, I went to Borgata Bakery for a pick-me-up. I planned on only having a liquid diet, uh, but I grabbed a latte and while I was there, I saw this incredible sandwich. It was so large, they were only selling slices of it and each slice was almost $20. I asked if they could heat it up for me and they obliged and that thing was gone within 60 seconds. And that is how my afternoon ended. I'm back up in my room. I'm ready to go to dinner. I am off tonight for my second night to be Prime. Be Prime Steakhouse. You might be saying, James, what the heck? You just went to a steakhouse last night. You're doing two in a row. You've never done that on the channel ever. What gives? Trust me, there's a method to my madness. And now you see why I wanted to go to B Prime on my second night. You never order a tomahawk on your last night at a hotel because it is gonna feed me throughout the entire day today. Um, I'm not sure I should be tomahawk guy anymore. I'm not sure how long this is gonna last. Uh, I just think the novelty wears off very, very quickly. Uh, last night, the steak appeared to be overcooked upon initial inspection, but on further review, it was actually cooked quite nicely. It was pretty good, and I did like the venue a lot. Its orbed bar and lounge and separated dining area reminded me a little bit of Koi at Planet Hollywood Las Vegas. This morning I woke up and I did indeed have a little bit of that tomahawk for breakfast, but I went down to Borgata Baking Company pretty promptly. There was major indulgence to be had. I had some type of flourless pastry, which pretty much meant it was all sugar. And then I had a chocolate bomb and then that was followed up with the most incredible Oreo cookie cupcake ever. Today and tonight, my plan is to check out some of the bars and lounges, the entertainment here at Borgata. Uh, before dinner, I'm headed down to the wine and the daiquiri bar. And then after dinner, I'm gonna head to a couple of the lounges here. Again, I really wanna see what the nightlife is like. You know, you make plans and then life happens. My plan was to go to the wine bar, the daiquiri bar, and then I was going to surprise you with the lobby bar and the casino bar. But at this point right now, I'll be lucky if I make it to the restaurant bar. Um, I'm not sure what happened. The wine bar was out of control. And if I'm frank with you, this trip is out of control. You know, it's not your typical out of control trip like you've seen in Putacana or Cabo, but this trip has been out of control since the beginning with the one pound burger, the half pound meatball, the pineapple express, the tomahawk, the total indulgence at Borgata Bacon Company. It's out of control. And I still have one hotel left and a full weekend at the boardwalk. I need to go home, but I have no home. <laughs> this is my home. 
Uh, anyway. Um, I'll never let you down. I'm your travel Labrador. I am your human sled dog until I collapse is my theme song. I'm off to dinner right now. Angeline's and then after that, Long Bar and Gypsy Bar. All right, all right. I am back in my room after dinner at Angeline. I came up here to chop up my leftovers. You know, Angeline reminds me of another word. Starts with A, three syllables. Average. Angeline was very average. The night continues. Uh, very, very quickly, last night, uh, the casino bar, surprisingly my favorite bar of this entire property. The mixology was great, fantastic cocktail list, service was fantastic. Long bar, it's just a long bar. I, I'm not really sure what the appeal is there. I found the space to be awkward, the cocktail list was average, I don't know I would ever go back in there again. Uh, and then lastly, Gypsy Bar. Now typically this is not my style. I'm not a fan of live music. I believe music belongs in a studio where it sounds perfect, not on a stage. We could certainly agree to disagree. I might be in the minority in that feeling, but I'll tell you what, I don't care. Gypsy Bar was awesome. I can't imagine what that place would be like with a huge act on the weekend. So Gypsy Bar was a lot of fun. Today I woke up, I went downstairs to the food court and I just got a salad. I went to the salad place, it was really cool. You could pick a standard salad and then modify it, or you could just start from scratch. Um, I started with a cob and I went over the top as usual. It was really cool to see them kind of chop it up and toss it right in front of you. All right, so Borgata. Is this really the number one hotel in Atlantic City? Is it worthy of all of the hype? Before I tell you yes or no, I'm gonna give you three negatives and three positives. As always, let's get the negatives out of the way. Uh, the first negative for me is going to be the location. Now, I actually don't mind the location that much. When I come to a property like this, I'm typically staying on it the entire time for two, three, or four days, and I don't really have any ambition to leave. But this is not in the best part of Atlantic City, the true part, the authentic part. And I'm talking about the boardwalk, where you have the pier, the beach, the ocean, and a lot of the other hotels around there are walkable. Number two would be the availability, uh, specifically of the bars, the lounges, and the restaurants. Now, I've seen this trend previously in Atlantic City, but for Borgata, the number one hotel, this place was packed. People were checking in at all times of day. The casino was extremely filled all times of day. And even with that, um, a lot of the best restaurants and dining options were not open during the week or were closed two or three days out of the week. Right, same thing with the best bars and lounges. They seem to be open on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And that's problematic if you wanna come here during the week. And lastly, the rooms. Now, I need to reiterate this again, the rooms are good, but for an elite hotel, the most elite hotel in Atlantic City, a hotel of this ilk, a hotel of this price, I just found the rooms to be a little lackluster. They're certainly undersized, I think, for a property of this stature, and they are certainly outdated for a property of this stature. So those are the negatives. I don't think they're deal breakers by any means. In fact, I think comprehensively they're quite tolerable. What about the positives? What makes this place so great? Why is it number one in Atlantic City? Uh, I think first and foremost is its elegance, its class, its sophistication, but I'll take it a step further. It isn't condescending, it isn't arrogant, and it isn't pretentious. It's very warm in here. The ambiance is very inviting, it's very welcoming, it's very comforting. It's not like the Bellagio, which I think is extremely stiff. It's not like the Venetian or Palazzo, where I think it's just a little too sterile and clinical. Uh, number two would be the service. Uh, the service is great. Now, it's not gonna be the over-the-top, five diamond service that you're going to get at say a St. Regis or Four Seasons, but I think it's even better because it was consistent. It was great everywhere from check-in to security, to the food court, to the fine dining. Every person I engaged with was great. They were warm, they were friendly, they were helpful. 
And lastly, this property is exceedingly well-rounded. It is impressively balanced. There is something here for everybody here at Borgata. Uh, there is an indoor pool, there's an outdoor pool, a full service spa, a fantastic gym, casual dining at the food court, various high-end fine dining options bars, lounges, even a nightclub. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not mention the casino floor. Now they don't particularly like it when you take photos or videos of the casino floor. I did the best I could. Uh, all I can say is that it is gorgeous. It is almost infinite. It spans the entire length of the property. I think this is possibly the largest casino in Atlantic City. If not, it's right up there. Slot machines, table games, poker room, a beautiful sports book. Uh, the casino floor here is extremely, extremely impressive. So with all that being said, I'm gonna give Borgata Atlantic City a five. This hotel is excellent. It is in a league of its own. Uh, it is by far the best property I've seen up until this point. Now, I do have its major competitor remaining. It's my very last hotel. And regardless how that stay goes, even if I do end up liking it more, I'll say this right now. Borgata is absolutely deserving of its number one title here in Atlantic City.